Good morning, everyone. It's Jelani. The morning scripture came from Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to thank you for another day of life. Dear Lord, I thank you for giving us strength to continue and to persevere. I thank you for uplifting our spirit in a time of, of our distress, in a time of our grief, in a time of our sorrow. You are able to lift us up, lifting up our head, keeping us above water, dear Lord, and letting us walk with all diligence, with all strength as we traverse this life of perils, this life of danger, this life of perverseness and darkness, dear Lord. You keep your light within us so that we are able to walk that narrow path. And in walking that narrow path, we shall reach to you. We shall finish and overcome this life and be with you in your eternal kingdom when that time does come. Nevertheless, whilst we exist in this mortal body, I pray that you keep us from sin, known and unknown. I pray that you open up our eyes to anything that is detestable, anything that is abominable to you, to you anything that you hate. I pray that you open up our eyes to this so that we, and not just open up our eyes, but make your spirit within us, cause us to repent and to turn away from those things that are, are not pleasing unto you so that we can serve you with the newness of life, the newness of life which we have through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, so that we, in turn, as he has done, may please you with this mortal life. And in that day, when you do come to redeem those who are yours, we shall be accounted worthy and faithful servants to attain this salvation and this glory which is found in you. As always, dear Lord, this word that you have given us, let us not forsake it, let us not belittle it, because your word is needed in this life. Also, help us in prayer to let us not pray amiss, but to pray those things which are according to your good, acceptable, and perfect and holy will, so that these may be granted unto us. Do not delay, I pray, dear Lord, and I pray that you send your angels charge over us also to fight our battles also. As we know that the, the, the war is raging in the spiritual realm. And dear Lord, I just pray as always for our brothers and sisters in the faith. Each and every one of us who are going through these times of purging. These times of hardship. These times of lack. I pray that in everything we know that we can we are already overcome through you Lord Jesus Christ. And in everything you shall sustain us. So that we do not faint nor give up but persevere until the end. Help our young ones also. Let them know you from, your, from their youth. Use us in their lives to show that light and that example of Christ so that when they're of age, they shall not depart from you. So I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all things. Lead us in spirit and in truth in your word this morning. In the name above all names, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Cool. Um, so Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 and 18 says the Lord thy God is the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty he will save he will rejoice over thee with joy he will rest in his love he will love over thee with he will joy over thee with singing sorry I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn feast a solemn assembly. Let's read that again. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Cool. All right. So this chapter here, I'm not sure where Zephaniah um, fall in the, the whole chronological order of things, right? I think it was just before or just... I'm not sure. We'd have to read the the whole um book. And I can't actually let's just see if it tells you. Oh, just told my Bible. 
Kush, the son of God, the son of da 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 da, in the days of Josiah. Okay, so he was in the days of Josiah. So Josiah was the king just before they were led away, led away into Babylon. Because when there was Josiah, then there was, I think, a couple sons of Josiah. And one of them were, was when they, they went into captivity into, into Babylon, right? I had it some written down somewhere. So... <laughs> Up to this time, right, if you read the book of Kings, Israel, they got a, 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 a good king that were doing good. Then they get a bad king, they start doing evil. And then it, the, the nation was split between Judah and Israel. And it would have just gone down the line, showing the kings after kings, generation after generation. And it just show you, oh, and this king done evil in the sight of the Lord. Oh, and this king done evil in the sight of the Lord. And then the people also were doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Josiah was one of those kings that did righteously, did good in the sight of the Lord, in so much that I think the title given unto him is that he there was no there was not found such a king that ter wholly turned his whole heart unto the Lord to do what the Lord because Josiah cleaned up the nation. He he went, he brought down all the fake God images, he done all of that stuff. He, he did a, a lot of things to purge the land from the corruption that they were doing right um as i said if zephaniah was a prophet in that time you would have seen all the evil that the people were doing and obviously um he would have seen what josiah the king would have been doing also cleaning up the land right <coughs> but nevertheless the, the scriptures always show that there is always a prophet in the midst of the people to to reprove them right and we know that they needed reproving because as i said they were lot as i said read the book of um kings and just look at what they were doing in those days and i believe in the in the in the account of josiah it actually details all of the things that josiah had to counteract because the people were doing so evil right and at the end of the day god hates evil he hates it hates i can use that word with god because god is not all love he actually hates things right and he hates evil he hates sin he hates that what is abominable he hates that which is um detestable right he's a perfect god he loves those things that are good lovely joyful peaceful right he loves those things that he has created to love right but as i said because of sin, we know that everything gone pear shape because um sin has now marred or corrupted that thing that was perfect from the beginning, which is his creation, right? So <coughs> one thing we have to know about God, although he hates sin, he loves oh, he's his we are his creation. He, he didn't create us to hate us, right? He did not do that. Right, and how I always look at it, I look at it as a child, right? I look at it from the inception of this creation, right? Not after Adam, I mean, like proceeding as Adam and Eve. Each of us was created as an infant, right? Innocent, right? If, if the theory went that God created us to hate us, then he would have hated even infants, right? No, this is not the case. He created all of us to love us, right? His intention for all of us is that none perish. But whilst we grow and we learn, because of the first thing, we learn now good and evil, not just good. <laughs> we're learning good and evil while we're growing up. Some tend to 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 um want to choose the evil, and some tend want to choose the good. But not nevertheless, all of us have chosen evil at some point. Because as long as you did one sin in your life, you chose evil, right? Which the God still hates sin, as I said, but. One scripture they was reading, for God so loved the world and the world is all of us that he gave his only begotten son and that is our Lord Jesus Christ that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is the love of God to all mankind, all sinners, all enemies of God, all enemies of Christ. He has shown the love to everyone, the one that love him, the one that hate him, the one that indifferent, he showed his love to all mankind. Because he is love and he's the perfect example. So he has to show that example. And in so doing it, he gave Christ to all of us. Every single person has that access to Christ. 
so that if we choose him we shall have eternal life right choosing to serve him doing what he says etc but as we said yesterday we cannot just 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 reside on that and say yep i'm i'm good we have to re read on right those who don't choose to, to to his love and those who don't through christ those who don't choose his love through christ are going to choose his condemnation and his damnation and his anger his eternal anger and rage which are reserved for the ungodly and those who hate god right this rage and anger and, and hatred was reserved for the devil and his angels because those are the ones that corrupted the world but if you side with the devil and his angels and those who are corrupt then you are you are you are handing yourself over to the wrath of god which nobody can quench right so yeah as i said just read zephaniah i know i didn't really go line by line this morning but if you read the context of you can see the love of god and see how he always is merciful towards our, us right and this chapter just shows you his mercy once more right so um i'll leave it at that this morning anything that you want to say or share send them into the word at each reach one.org and as much as the lord has led me and taught me and kept me over the years i will answer him according to his word according to his principles according to his will being led by his holy spirit so have a good day everyone and god's willing we'll catch up tomorrow